A few months ago, I published a video showing you how to create an awesome PC stats display using a Raspberry Pi and some free software from ModBros. Now, I stand by that video. ModBros software is incredibly easy to work with, and it's a quick and easy solution for getting a decent looking stats display. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a different kind of stats display, still using a Raspberry Pi, but this time using IDA64 to create a much more flexible display. So before getting too far into this build, I should point out that IDA64 isn't free, but it's a great piece of software for hardware enthusiasts and can tell you pretty much everything you would ever want to know about your system. If you're into your PC, no, not in that way, then I highly recommend you buy it. So just like with the last build, you're going to need a few different bits and pieces to get working with a Raspberry Pi. You'll need the Pi itself, a micro SD card of at least 8GB, power supply, a screen, and some sort of case to put it in. You can find my Amazon parts list in the description below, but any Pi and screen combination you have lying around at home will work. You'll also need a USB keyboard and mouse to configure the Pi to start with. Actually, I should point out, you don't even technically need a Pi for this project, as the display we're going to generate will work from a web browser. So any old phone or tablet would do, but who doesn't love a good Pi? The first step will be to assemble the parts of your Pi together. If you're using the official Raspberry Pi screen, then this connects via a ribbon cable and some jumper leads for power. Other screens connect directly to the Pi via an HDMI connector, which will work just as well. With the screen connected, you just need to pop everything into some sort of case, and the hardware side of things is done. Easy. Next, you'll need to install an operating system on the Pi, and I recommend you use the stock Raspberry Pi OS and the free utility on the website for installing onto your micro SD card. Simply install the SD card into a card reader connected to your PC, open the utility, choose the Raspberry Pi OS from the list of options, select your SD card, and then write the software to it. Once the software is copied across and verified, your Raspberry Pi is ready to go. Simply insert the micro SD card, power it up, and it should boot into the Raspberry Pi OS. Next, we're going to set the Pi aside for a moment and move back over to our Windows PC and take a look at the software which will generate the stats display, IDA64. You can download it for free from the link in the description to try it out for 30 days, but I do recommend that you buy it. Once installed, take a while to get used to the interface and all it can do. It's a really thorough and useful piece of software for understanding about your PC and running benchmarks. To get started creating your stats display, you'll need to click File from the menu bar, and then select Preferences. This will open a new window, and from there you'll need to click LCD in the left-hand menu. Next, in the right-hand pane, ensure that Remote Sensor is selected, then ensure that the TCP IP port field shows 80. Beneath that, you have an option called Preview Resolution, and this needs to be set to the same resolution as your Raspberry Pi display, which for the official display is 800 by 480. With that done, click the Enable Remote Sensor LCD support box. Now, if you go to a web browser and type 127.0.0.1 colon 80 into the address bar, you'll see a live readout of your stats display. And it's probably quite underwhelming at this point, just a black rectangle. Head back to IDA64 and in the left hand pane, expand the LCD menu and then click on LCD items. From within this pane, you'll be able to create your stats display. Let's briefly go over the layout. The top pane is your preview window. To the right of that, you have some buttons for importing and exporting your settings. We'll come back to those buttons later. Beneath those buttons, you have a tool for moving items around on your screen. And beneath the preview window, you have a list view, which will show you the various widgets, images, and text that you've added to your screen. And you can see we can have up to six different pages of information. To the right of the list view, you have some descriptive buttons for adding, deleting, and moving the assets you add to the display. Right now, the only one clickable is the New button, so go ahead and press it. This brings up the New Item window, and from here we can add assets to our stats screen. 
The first thing I want to add is a background image. This can be any appropriately sized image, and I recommend you resize any images you want to display using an application like GIMP or Photoshop. Click on the item type drop down list and select image. You can then click the button with the three dots to bring up a browser window and select your image file. You can also choose to position the image using the X and Y values. By default, they're zeroed, which means that the top left corner of the image will be placed in the top left corner of the preview window. If you increase the X value, the image will move to the right. If you insert a minus value, it will move to the left. Similarly, if you increase the Y value, the image moves down, or inserting a minus value will move it up. If your image is sized correctly, then leaving these values at zero will work just fine. So click OK, and you can now see the image is presented in our preview window. Next, we want to add some stats to the display, and this is where IDA64 is much more flexible than the ModBro software. Click New to add a new item, and then click the Item Type drop-down again. You can see we have options to add a sensor item, a simple sensor item, a static label, an image, a graph, or an art gauge. These all have a bunch of customizable options, and I'm not going to go into each one in detail, but let's have a quick overview of what each one means. The Sensor Item option allows you to select a system attribute like CPU clock speed from the list of available options and have this displayed on the screen. You can see that the list is pretty exhaustive and covers clock speeds, memory, utilization, network use, hard disk access, and even FPS in games if you have FRAPS or RTSS installed. Whichever option you select here will be what is displayed on the stat screen. Beneath the list, you have some options for general formatting of the item, including text color, size, and font. You can also optionally include a label for the item, which will be displayed alongside it. I'm going to select CPU clock speed, and you can see that the label is updated automatically. If you don't like what it says, you can just edit it. On the next pane, you have some further options for displaying unit values. You can choose to display these or not, and you have some options for color and text formatting. On the bar pane, you have the option for the size of your bar graph and can set values for the scale and color boundaries so that colors change based on thresholds you specify. When you're happy with the choices, you can click OK and you'll see that your bar graph is shown in the preview window. If you're not happy with the position, you can quickly move it using the on screen controls. Just select the item from the item list and then click the arrow buttons to move it. For larger adjustments, you can click on the center button to change between 1, 5, 10, and 20 pixel movements. If you're not happy with the way the item looks, you can double click it or click and select the modify button to bring up the item window and make any changes. Next, I'll show you how to add a simple sensor item. This is like the previous option, but only allows you to display the reading for the item selected and a text label. I'm going to use this to display the time. I'm going to include a label called time and click OK. Then I can select it in the item list and use the arrow keys to move it to the top right hand side of the display. Next is the static label option, which can be used to add additional text to your display that isn't associated with a reading from your system. I'm just going to add some free text and click OK and you can see it added here. We've already covered image earlier, so let's talk about graph. This gives a visual readout of a sensor value over time, so I'm going to select memory utilization and I'm going to make the graph a bit bigger so it's easier to see. You can see that the amount of memory used is drawn across the graph over time, giving a really neat looking effect. Lastly, we have the arc gauge. This forms a circular bar graph which can change color based on thresholds and can be adjusted in size just like everything else. Once added, it gives a nice circular readout of your selected item. If you find that you can't get all the info you want on one screen, then you can click the Pages tab at the top of the item list and create a whole new page. Then you can click on the LCD Options tab in the left hand menu and select the option to cycle through various pages at set time periods. Now, I know this particular readout looks pretty terrible, but with a bit of work, you can come up with some pretty striking designs. Just check this out.
So you can see no matter whether your display is showing the latest game, a good movie, your favorite band, or just your own logo, you can really create something quite unique. When you've got something you like, you just need to click the export button in the LCD items window and save the layout somewhere on your PC. Similarly, you can import previously saved items if you feel like changing it up. So now our display is set up within IDA64, and if we go back to that web browser, we can see that it looks really good. But how do we get that information onto the Raspberry Pi? Well, first we need to finish the initial setup. Connect up your keyboard and mouse to the Raspberry Pi and navigate through the setup phase, choosing the options most relevant to you. Once you're finished, you'll be presented with the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. The first thing we're going to do is enable SSH access. This is a way for us to control the Raspberry Pi from a command line on another machine. Click on the Start menu, then navigate to Preferences, and then Raspberry Pi Configuration. On the window that opens, click the Interfaces pane and then ensure that SSH is set to Enabled, then click OK. Next, you need to work out the IP address your Raspberry Pi is using so that you can connect to it from your PC. Hover the mouse cursor over the up and down arrows in the taskbar, and you should see the IP address your Pi is using to connect to your home network. Write this down. You can now move back to your PC as everything else can be configured over SSH. To do this, you'll need to install a free piece of software called Putty, which is linked in the description below. Install Putty and then open it. Make sure that the SSH radio button is selected and then type the IP address of your Pi into the host name field and click Open. You'll be presented with a command line window and asked for the user credentials for your Raspberry Pi. The default username is Pi and the password is Raspberry. You should then reach a command prompt and from here you can make the requisite changes so that your Pi displays your stats screen on boot up. This is achieved by opening a full page web browser and automatically navigating to the stats screen page broadcast by IDA64. To do this, we're going to issue some commands and edit some config files so that the browser starts on boot up. The commands used are all written in the video description and can be copied and pasted into PuTTY. The first command is going to install an app which removes the mouse cursor from the screen. Type sudo apt-get install unclutter and hit return. You'll be prompted to confirm the installation, just hit Y on your keyboard and hit return. Once that is finished, type sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash xdg forward slash lx session forward slash lxde hyphen pi forward slash auto start and hit return. The auto start text file should open within putty. Now we're going to add some extra lines to the file to remove the mouse cursor, ensure the screen doesn't turn off and to finally open the browser in full screen mode during boot. Again, all these commands are in the video description below and you can copy and paste them into putty by right clicking. The only thing you need to change is the IP address of the machine running IDA64, which you can find from Windows settings under the network settings. Once you've copied the text into PuTTY and included the correct IP address, you need to press the Control key and O on your keyboard to save the file, pressing Return to confirm, and then press Control and X to exit the text editor. Back at the command prompt, you can issue a command to reboot the Pi, and hopefully, when it reboots, you'll be presented with the IDA64 stat screen. And that's how it's done. You can check out further information on my website via the link in the video description to see a more in-depth written guide. I've also made available some of the settings files for download if you like the look of any of the screens I've produced for this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. And until next time, have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.